Good morning, everyone. I'm recording this in my basement here at 63 Ravenswood Road in Breslau. Well, back in 2006, we decided to sell our house uh, out on Sterling Avenue in Kitchener and to build this new house. It was exciting because it's, this was going to be our first new house that we'd be moving into. And it was on a brand new piece of land. There was construction going on all over the place. It was in a new development. There's all sorts of exciting things about it. And I remember very clearly that those months, it took, I think, four months for the house to be built. And during those four months, Gail and I would come by often in the evenings just to check the progress of how things were going. And there were times where it was amazing to see what happened from one day to the next, one week to the next, and how quickly the superstructure was beginning to take shape. And every time we rounded the corner and came up the street and we saw what, it, what was happening in the house, it was sort of like this, wow, this is incredible. Look at what is being built. And as the walls got up and the <clears throat> doors and windows got put in and we could come inside there and we looked around and and um, putting insulation in and then later on the drywall. As it took shape, we began to see and consider how our furniture would fit into here and what we would do in these certain situations. This was this amazing, exciting discovery of building something new from the ground up and being able to be intimately engaged in each part of that activity. Well, in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, the author here talks a lot about a house being built and, and the fact that this house that is being built is, is the house that Christ himself has built. But it's not like any other house. So let me read these six verses from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus, whom we declare to be God's messenger and the high priest. For just as he was faithful to God, who anointed him, just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truths God would reveal later. But Christ Jesus, as his son, is in charge of God's entire house, and we are God's house, if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. I like that how it says that, you know, when a house is built, we bless the, the, the builder of the house. We, we don't bless the house itself because it's the builder who made it. And in that same way, Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, is in charge of the whole house. And who's that house? It's you and it's me. And Jesus Christ is in charge of this house. And so therefore we should maintain courage and remain confident because our hope is in the one who is in charge. Jesus is in charge of this house. Jesus is in charge of your house, of your life. Bless him today. God bless you, church, praying for you.